again, it is I, Derek from Tomcat Gas Training, and welcome to this video, which is our Halloween special. But before I get into this video, please could you take some time to subscribe because it helps the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell because I've got no clue when I upload these videos, and don't forget to give me that thumbs up. Anyway, that's enough waffle and messing around, so let's get on with it and find out exactly what this Halloween special is all about. Now, what's this Halloween special video all about then? Well, basically what I've done is I've taken a load of photographs which have been sent in by my trainees or on jobs I've been on or what I've nicked off the internet. And I'm gonna show you some horrors which we find out there in our day-to-day -day life as a gas engineer. Now, hopefully, all these photographs I'm gonna be showing you today None of these installs have been installed by a gas engineer because I would be mortified if they had. And I think a lot of them have been installed by DIYers or people claiming to be gas engineers because some of them are quite shocking. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's have a look at gas meters first. Now at this gas meter, the customer was complaining their new boiler which they just had installed was not working properly and kept turning itself off. So when we got to the meter, what can you see? Well, this lead pipe. Hmm, bit twisted. So probably that's why the new boiler is not working. So this lead pipe should have actually been replaced when the new boiler was installed because it probably is not big enough anyway. Now at this gas meter, the regulations state that there should not be two flexible connections coming off the meter, but if there are two flexible connections, then the pipe needs to be secured within 600 millimeters of the meter, and the meter must be on a bracket and secured to the floor of the wall, as it is kind of here. But if you look closely at the right-hand side anaconda, which is coming from the flow from the meter, it's actually connected to the ECV, so this meter is running backwards, so that means they're stealing gas. So in this picture, you can see there is one flexible connection coming off the gas meter, but it's on the opposite end it normally is. So what they've done is they've extended the inlet to the regulator with a copper pipe so they could get it away from the electric meter and the consumer unit. But what they've seemed to have forgot is also that a gas pipe needs to be 25 mil away from an electric cable or a plug socket but 150 mil away from a consumer unit so they're on a loser whichever way they did it now on this gas meter the first thing you see on the bracket is the tamper screws are missing but if we go further up you can see an even worse thing somebody's actually connected their gas supply to the house with a cooker hose. Now then, mm, that's breaking quite a few regulations. Now from this picture, you can see this semi-concealed meter box is broken, so the lid is damaged. So according to the regulations, this box cannot be damaged, and it also requires a lock, and the customer also requires a key for it. But you can quite clearly see that this is damaged, and uh, will allow rain into the semi-concealed meter box which is not a good idea for a gas meter but it gets worse this meter box has no door on it whatsoever so it is not secure and is not stopping any kind of weather from damaging the anaconda the meter or the bracket but it gets even worse than this one this semi-concealed meter box has no lid whatsoever. So you can see this has not just got rain in there, it's also got a lot of debris just to rot away this gas meter. Now can we get any worse than the last one? Yes we can, because this surface mounted meter box has its cover missing completely as well. And this meter is looking in a very sorry state. So can we get worse than this one? I'm afraid we can. 
This meter has actually been installed outside and it looks like it's been installed outside for a very long time without any kind of meter box on there. And then considering the meters belong to the supplier, this meter's never been read, has it? <laughs> or tested, because any engineer would not leave a gas meter in this state, hopefully not anyway. Surely we can't find a meter worse than the last one. Well, this one has got a lot of expanding foam around it, which is not just rotting the gas pipe, it's also rotting the gas meter, as you can see from the picture. Now I've saved the worst for the last. There isn't even a meter on this one. Somebody's actually bypassed the meter. But you can see somebody's put new meter with an arrow going to the left hand side to tell you that there's probably the meter's been moved somewhere, but they couldn't be bothered to alter the pipe work outside. That's just ridiculous. So that's gas meters. Which was your favourite? Put it down in the comments below. Now some of the things I did say about the meters, there were other things wrong as well. So if you spotted anything, get it in those comments below. So let's continue and have a look at gas cookers. Now I've just said this section's cookers, so why have we got a washing machine? Oh my word, somebody has decided to sellotape a hob to the top of a washing machine. How ridiculous is that? What are they going to do when the washing machine's on? Are they going to boil a pan of water? I don't think so. Now according to the standards, every gas cooker requires a stability bracket or chain. And this stability bracket or chain needs to be fixed to the wall, not the gas pipe. So, even though this has got a chain, who would think about securing it to the gas pipe? The chain is there to stop the gas pipe and the hose being pulled out of the wall. I think this would actually pull it out of the wall. Now, according to the standards, every gas hob should be connected to the gas supply via a rigid pipe with some kind of isolation point. Not a flexible tap connector. <sighs> and there's another flexi tap connector connecting the gas to the hob. At least the one in the picture beforehand was a compression fitting. This is actually a push fit one. And look how close it is to the electrical supply. Are you having a laugh? And whoever installed this one must have thought what an amazing job they'd done connecting the gas supply to the hob because they only had little space to work in. Yeah mate, jog on. And this hob, as well as having a flexi tap connector, has also got a gate valve turning the gas off. But look how lovely that is going round the bracket for the uh, draw. Absolutely amazing. Not. Now if the manufacturers say the hob can be connected by a flexible connection, it can be. But this is the prime example of why I think that should be outlawed and no cooker hose should be able to be attached to a hob. Because I have never seen a hob connected by a cooker hose that has actually been installed correctly. This is just ridiculous. So in my opinion, hobs should be only connected to the gas supply with a rigid pipe, not a cooker hose. And why this baller fix service valve is connected to this gas pipe is beyond me because this is actually going up to feed a cooker bayonet which is also installed the wrong way. It should be looking down, not to the side. Oh, my word. And this cooker connection breaks quite a few regulations, but the worst regulation it breaks is somebody's connected the pipe via a plastic push fit fitting, which is a big no-no on gas. And again, let's save the worst to the last. Customer, hey mate, are you a gas engineer? Yeah. Can you service my cooker? Gas engineer, 
Not a chance, mate. Where's my labels and warning notice? <sighs> now, if your favourite the last one, the one where the cooker worked service in, <laughs> not a chance. Anyway, that's cookers. Let's have a look at a few open fluid faults. Now, there are not that many open fluid fires in there, but we still get quite a few open fluid fires. So let's have a look at open flues. Now, open flue boilers are becoming particularly rare nowadays, but if we look at this installation, hmm, this is not how you connect twin wall to an asbestos flue pipe. Bits of tape? Nah, mate, don't use bits of tape. Now, this boiler is connected to a ridge terminal with flue liner. Flexible flue liner should go down a chimney, not be in a loft. And according to the regulations now, flexible flue liner cannot be on show or touched. So this will need ripping out then. And if you look closely at the ridge terminal, the flexible flue liner is connected to the ridge terminal again with bits of tape. Hopefully gas engineers don't think you can connect flues with bits of tape. And another boiler where the asbestos flue in the loft has been taken out and a flexible flue liner has been connected to the asbestos flue. Mm, well, we don't really want to be touching asbestos, do we? But this is a definite no-no. And finally, in this section, this boiler has been connected to the flue system with the right flue system for a change. They've used twin wall fluing, which is perfect. Except, they installed it upside down. Oh my word. So that's open flues. My personal favourite is why gas engineers want to hold everything together with tape. If they are gas engineers. Anyway, next lot of videos we're going to be showing you is boiler installs. And I pray that none of these have been installed by gas engineers. Customer to the gas engineer. Well, if you weren't so dear, you would have got the job. This guy was a quarter of your price. Gas engineer. Yeah, love, whatever you say. Customer. Yeah, mate, you gas engineers, you're too expensive. So, I did it myself. And look at this amazing job I've done. No way was I going to pay all that money to you lot when I can do it quite perfectly myself. Yeah, of course you did, mate. And where's my Ridor forms? Builder to the customer. Don't worry, you don't need to get them gas engineers in. They're too expensive. We'll actually move the boiler ourselves. And it'll look absolutely perfect and be done just like a gas engineer would do it. Yeah, of course it has. What do you mean I can't use garden hose for my blow-off pipe? It made it so much easier to do it that way. Yeah, mate. Brilliant. Customer to gas engineer. What do you mean you can't fix it? I thought you were a gas engineer. Yeah, well, I might be a gas engineer, but I'm not a miracle worker. Here's another one. Customer. Well, it was only serviced last year. Yeah, of course it was. You're still going to need a new boiler though. And again, let's save the best or the worst to the last. Well, they didn't have anywhere else in my bathroom to install my boiler. Yes, love, but they can't install it over your bath. It's not allowed. So that's boiler installs, which was your personal favourite. Put in the comments down below which one you liked the best. Anyway, we're going to look at boilers, so let's have a look at flue installs. Now, I would have loved to have known what the conversation was like between the builders of the conservatory and the customer 
about moving the boiler. Nah, you don't need to have the boiler moved. What we can do is we can make a shield for it and it'll be perfect. It'll look absolutely great. I think that's probably how it went. All the conversation for this one. Don't worry, we won't have that smoky stuff all over your stairs. What we'll do is we'll take it straight the way through and you won't get any of that smoky stuff covering your stairs. You'll have to step over the flue like, but you won't get that smoky stuff all over you. What a joke. Who thought of doing this? At least they put a terminal guard on it though. <laughs> Probably the most common fault we come across with flues is being too close to extractor fans and windows and doors and stuff because the flue has to be 300 millimeters away from an opening into a building. So uh, here's one. Here's another, which is uh, a little bit closer than the last one. In fact, it's probably halfway through the vent. Here's another one. And this one is absolutely amazing. This Worcester flu actually comes through the actual grill. At least it's a closable one, but it gets worse. Because once we took the grill off, this is what we found. And yes, that on the right hand side is an extractor fan from a bathroom. And here's another flue, which is a little bit too close to an opening in a building. It still needs to be 300 millimeters away, even if it's above the opening. And if it's under a carport, this flue should be 1.2 meters away from an opening to within a building. And this one is too close to an opening for the door and the window. And it's a Baxi flu with white showing, which is not allowed. And it's also too close to a downpipe or soil pipe. So what do we do with this one then? So remember, it needs to be 300 mil from the side of the flu to the opening. This is right up against the frame, but it's still not 300 mil from the opening in the window. And this one is not too close to an opening in the building, but it is a bit too close to the wall. I can actually see the flue is damaging the wall, and it could also be going into vented eaves. So, not good either. The next few pictures we've got are flue sticking out too far. This isn't even sealed neither. This one hasn't even got a terminal on the end. And I have no clue what they were thinking with this one. It just baffles me. And again, saving the worst till last. What actually does go through the minds of builders when they're building extensions on houses? Why don't they get the boilers moved first? Look at this one. It's even plastered. And they left a hole out in the ceiling as well. That could be going into a bedroom. What are they doing? Just leaving the door off does not make this boiler safe at all. And that is the end of this video. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you want me to do any more like this, then why don't you send some of the pictures you found out there in the field and I'll uh, do another one. I will put the email address down in the description below and uh, you can send me over your pictures. But if you have liked this video, why don't you subscribe? And don't forget to hit that notification bell because even I don't know when we're uploading the videos. And don't forget to give it that thumbs up. Anyway, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, happy Halloween, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.